Hi, my name is Alessandro Gangelosi and that's a video tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for Max Cookie. This time in this TP video I'd like to see something interesting about Final Render, so we'll continue to talk about this uh, rendering engine coming from Sebas. And I'd like to see uh, all the properties we have uh, to um, add it to the feature set in 3ds Max to be able to control how the objects will look and will ma be managed by the final render engine. You know that in 3ds Max I'm able to use the right mouse button click, go inside the object properties and we have the properties uh, for the mesh. And you know that in 3ds Max we have the general panel, the advanced lighting panel, the inventory ray panel and some more staffs. You see that other uh, plugins can install some additional panel as real flow for example or you see we have a complete new panel added by Final Render and you see that we have a lot of properties there and some properties are really useful and some other properties are useful just for rendering purpose. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, you see that we have some general properties regarding the global illumination engine so you see we have the possibility to say to some mesh just to have no receiving global illumination or no sending global illumination or to calculate or not the self global illumination on itself you see that we have the possibility to control also the caustics so we can say to receive or to send caustics so for example these objects by default have the receive caustics so if we have there, for example, a reflective surface or a refractive surface, we can send uh, the caustics over this teapot, but if we remove this one, we have no, no caustics over it. If we like uh, to have a mesh creating caustics, we have to remember to set send caustics, because that's the only way to say that this object is uh, uh, producing and creating caustics during rendering. You see that we have also the possibility to have uh, a direct control over the caustics pa uh, parameter just for every single mesh. Or if you set to use global settings, we can use the global setting inside the rendering menu. Then you see that we have a general rendering control and we have the possibility to say if a mesh is visible or not to reflection, visible or not to refraction, visible to GI, and we have also the possibility to downgrade GI to have a scaling in the GI quality and we have the possibility to control the alpha directly of the mesh so we can decide that this mesh has no alpha for example and uh, we can for example render just the occlusion alpha so the occlusion area where uh, the object is occluded by other objects <coughs> sorry will be calculated in the alpha and in another way we can decide to have no alpha for the occluded area and uh, you see those properties are really similar to uh, the visible to reflection or refraction there but uh, it's uh, an, a really interesting way to control it over there too because we have more possibility then you see that we have the uh, general control over the motion blur so if we set the motion blur inside the rendering engine, we have the possibility to set the parameters for every single mesh. You see that we have the multiplier for uh, to say how much mesh and blur is created by these uh, objects, and then we have the possibility to set which kind of motion blur we have to use for this mesh. So, for example, the NAN, the 3D motion blur, the image blur, or the twin. And we have also the other properties as we can find inside the final render, and we'll see more in depth in the future how to use the uh, motion blur in uh, final render and you see that we have all the options so I'm not doing something special with it just because we didn't see uh, in depth how to use the motion blur in final render then you see that we have also a control over the ambient occlusion and that's really interesting because if we are using the ambient occlusion let's make for example a test so let's prepare an ambient occlusion uh, shader so we go there and we say ambient occlusion and uh, let's say maybe one meter so I, I'm not checking the scale there let's see the scale it's one meter okay and uh, let's go there let's say self-illuminated 
then we go there inside rendering use global override and we copy this one as instance you see that we have the possibility to exclude there some meshes for from the ambient occlusion but uh, let's go there and let's say 32 and let's say okay for the scale you see that it is calculating the global illumination uh, sorry the ambient occlusion there if we say for example to this mesh object properties and say uh, that it's receiving a halo but it's not saying uh, it's just sending a halo you see that it has no uh, ambient occlusion over it so it's just gray but you see that it is creating the GI there so obviously we have to choose to have another shader over it because we have no possibility to create the AO and this one is an error over the rendering but we have the possibility to select which objects as the AO so you see we can say receive and not send and you see that we have the AO over the teapot but we have no AO over the plane done by the teapot uh, let's go back to the object properties you see that we have also the options for the subsurface scattering obviously we had no possibility to see how to use the subsurface scattering in Final Render so we don't see in depth how to use it but you know that we have also the possibility to uh, control the parameters just for every single mesh and we have the same for example there for the micro triangle displacement so we have a control, a general control inside Final Render, but we can set it uh, uh, by every single uh, mesh inside the scene, and that's really, really useful to have uh, a precise control, because, for example, we can have a mesh really near to the camera, and we need an eye uh, subdivision level there, but, for example, we can have a mesh that is uh, really far from the camera, and we can need a really low subdivision level, so you know it's important to have the possibility to control the micro triangle displacement just for every single mesh to have a better workflow and control over the quality and the mm, the rendering time let's close this panel and you see that we have then matte shadow and utilities then you see that we have there the possibility to convert uh, the uh, properties from the old final render to the new one so it's just to make some uh, conversion uh, steps inside final render release then we have the matte shadow you know that uh, we have the possibility to have there inside the material editor the matte shadow shader from final render and okay keep hold and you know that we have to assign this shader for the uh, to the mesh or we have to use the global override material as we done for the ambient occlusion but we have also this way that is really really fast and really simple because we can choose the, uh, the mesh we like to use for the matte we can say use matte and if we use matte you see that the object is black let's remove the material over right and you see that we have this object as matte and that's really really good let's give a shader to the plane uh, let's say advance it with a little bit of reflection let's say more reflection Okay, you see there uh, we can use an higher level of IRR okay so you see that we have more reflectivity um, let's imagine uh, sorry to go there and control how the matte shadow will act you see that we have the use and the alpha let's check the alpha now you see that we have no alpha there sorry no alpha there let's see what happen if we change 
this one we can say for example alpha 1 and you see that we start seeing the alpha there and we have so the control of how the alpha channel will be exported when we are using the mat uh, we have the possibility to apply atmosphere because you know that we can use for example fume effects or fog or something else and we have the same way to, uh, to control the atmosphere application as we can do using the shader and then you see that we have the receive shadow and the affect alpha so if we have the shadows we can have it over the layer so let's imagine that we have um, a light we can move it it's a really simple scene, nothing so special okay you see that obviously the quality is really low but we have the shadows over there and that's the shadows that we are creating and we have the shadows over the, the mesh we can do the same thing on this one let's move it there so we have the shadows over it and we can say final render properties matte use and we have the affect shadows render and you see that we have the shadows created by these objects okay um, let's see whatever we can do there and you see that we have the possibility to say to receive the shadows from the other objects we have the possibility to say to affect the alpha from the shadows and that's right because we need for example to comp the um, the shadows over uh, uh, other layers in composing software and then we have the possibility to control the uh, direct amount of lighting the GI amount of lighting and we have the possibility obviously to uh, change the shadows look we have the brightness of the shadows so we can make uh, clear or dark uh, shadows we have the possibility to control also the color of the shadows we have the possibility to say to have the self shadows over it or we have for example the possibility to say please do not have the shadow from other mats so for example if this one is a mat let's get there and let's say that this one is a mat and we render you see that now we have no shadows coming from this mesh because it is a matte shadow is a matte mesh let's go back to the object properties and inside the mat we have also all the possibility for the reflection or refraction we can for example say that we like to have reflection and obviously there is really low but we uh, we can re uh, prepare uh, a better way to have let's control for example if in other way we can see it better but it's not simple because we have uh, not so good mesh that can be reflected let's try just to have for example this one really near and uh, we we don't see it because there is black uh, maybe you can do this one self illuminated self illuminated to see the reflection over the 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 teapot and you know that we have the control over the amount of reflection or refraction and you have the possibility to choose if we uh, are using this parameter to have an additive uh, reflection or we are controlling the intensity or we are controlling the amount and we can say if the reflection the refraction will be inside the alpha channel or not uh, there we have the possibility to say how the object is seen by the other uh, uh, other mesh and uh, let's say sorry to have there the reflection is right sorry because I, I was checking there but you see the reflection is over the other objects for sure and you see that we have it and uh, uh, then back object properties and there and we say uh, how it is 
also uh, seen by the other objects. Uh, we can say to see the mat, to see the mat remapped, or to see the object material. And obviously, this one is really useful because we can have the mat for the mesh, but we have the right reflection inside of you, uh, the rendering. So uh, you see that the final render option and properties for the mesh are really useful and really powerful, and you can control some general stuffs for rendering for every single mesh, and you have also the possibility to control all the match shadows directly or the mesh without the need to control uh, everything using just a shader. So I think that for the moment that's all, and I hope to see you back on MaxCookie to check for a new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com. Bye.